Hello, everybody. Poker players out there that are viewing this uh, video today. I'm Al Spath. Um, teach at this site at Full Flush. Teach Al Spath. And uh, I'm happy to be on the air with you on YouTube and Twitch TV. You can find me at Twitch TV at twitch.com uh, and just search for Teach GPL. GPL. I put it over in the... Uh, chat screen for you as well and uh, we're sitting here today at a 25 cent 50 cent table we're just coming out of the micro limits here a little bit but not much we've been concentrating on the lower limits here I'm in the big blind I'm out of position my hand is pretty good this is a late razor here I'm gonna give him a, a call here figuring he doesn't have much anything and now I'm gonna to try to take the pot from him and I think I'm gonna to have to go big and if he's got ace, queen, or ace, jack, he's got to go away. He doesn't go away. And so now I'm going to check as if I hit that diamond flush. He may already have a diamond flush. We'll see if he fires back at us. He's thinking about it. He didn't fire, so now we're going to fire back as if we had the flush. We hope he buys it. If he has the flesh, of course, he's not going to buy it. He didn't buy it, but he couldn't beat the 10. Shame on him. So maybe he had, let's go back and replay it. Maybe he had pocket eights, pocket sevens. He didn't, and maybe if he had pocket nines, he would have had a set. So he couldn't have pocket nines. He could have had ace nine suited. Uh, but again, he was in late position, wider range. I tried something. I was successful. You're not always going to be successful with it. I was pretty lucky there. Some of you wouldn't have done any of that. I understand that. But as you grow in confidence and as you learn more, you'll find out when your head's up with somebody that raised pre-flop and it looks like there's only one over card on the board and it may have missed them, that if you've got a decent enough hand, you can bet into them and they'll fold right there. They'll just fold the tent. And so you can win. If you check, they're going to fire a bet at you. Then you're going to have to come over the top. Of them. It's a little bit more difficult to do when they're involved in the hand and they've and they got more money into the pot. So when you're up against one or even two people and you want to try something like that out of position, is bet into them and don't give them first opportunity to put the pressure on you. Here I've got lousy cards. Some of you might like those cards. If it was 7-5, I would definitely... Uh, maybe put it in bed if I was first, but not with the 8-5. A minute ago, before you got on the video with me, I played one hand and I had a 5-7 of spades in early position. And if I'm going to play that, I'm going to raise. I raised the pot and I got one caller. And the flop came 6-8 uh, jack of spades. So I flopped the spade flush with an open end straight flush draw. But the, I bet half the pot because... If, the, if my opponent here, I'm going to raise the pot. If my opponent had a big spade, he would stay. I'd give, I'd give him a free card or she. And if they had a king or an ace, they would they could hit. So I took a chance and went there. Now I'm definitely going to bet against one person here. I'm going to bet the full pot. I raised pre-flop saying I had an ace. And so even though I have only a seven, I'm going to get that person out. I'm not going to fool around with a half pot. I don't want to keep him in there. I'm not with that that ace out there. I have a seven and I have a redraw for another seven or an eight, but I don't have many outs to improve. So at this table, when you're playing the 25 cent 50, you sit down, you can sit with a max of $50, which I did. You can see this person is at 85. Uh, he's in the U.S. This guy is at 55. They, they, they've been winning. We know they've been, this guy here on nuts has been winning. We know that. We know that this guy's been winning. We don't know about these guys. They may be new. This guy may be losing. This one is not a, a winning hand in any shape or form. Here we got a guy that posted 50 cents and then checked. We know he has any two cards. If he had a good hand, he would have raised. Okay? He's not going to fold a bad hand. I would, I would say that he's not going to call $2 here. And that's what you have to do when you're not in hands, is look at how much money people have and what they're betting. See, he folded anticipate what the action is don't count on this person if you were in the hand here with the jack let's say this was something else and you had a good hand of this person put more money in because 
you have to notice that they post it, and they're more likely going to fold because they check. That's all information that's available for you at the table. The size of their stacks tells you that they've been winning or, or losing. Um, you might want to find out where they're from in the world because sometimes uh, people in Asians play different than and, uh, Russians and uh, Europeans play different than both. And also look at time differences. The time difference right now, it's, it's 11 or 12.30 at Eastern time with me, but the people in Europe are five or six hours uh, ahead in early evening, so they're just settling in, and the people in, in the Soviet Union and, and, and some of those other countries over there, it may be really late at night. They may be tired. They may be had too much vodka. Who knows? Buy that guy another round on me. That's what I do when I play live. I tell that cocktail waitress to bring somebody at the table another drink. I, I don't have any problem buying somebody a drink. Oh, that's right. They're free drinks. But I send them to other people that I want to get a little bit loose. So here we have a mess. Just a total mess. If anybody has the three, it would be the guy in the blind. Usually somebody in early position, unless they're playing with ace three suited, doesn't have it. He doesn't even have that. He doesn't even have an ace, the guy in early position. So who knows? He he may have had, uh, I don't know. That was tough. All right. I don't like this hand at all in an early position. We're playing short. We're playing three short. So we're playing seven-handed. That makes this hand a little bit better. Maybe makes it similar to, to king-queen. I'm going to fold it, though, because I just don't think it's strong enough. I would If I played it, i come in for the pot, a dollar and a quarter. And how do you get the pot bet? You hit the pot button. But some people don't know how to figure it out. 50 cents is what I would have to bet to call. 50 and 25. That's a dollar and a quarter. So the pot bet would be a dollar and a quarter. Seems like they want to give me the king of diamonds quite often. Okay, so we got a limper here. Usually, limpers have connected cards, small, medium pairs. They have hands like ace suited, ace three, ace eight, even ace rag. In some cases, you're going to have to find out what the kind of player it is. This person went 275. The normal bet here would have been probably a 175. So I think they're protecting the hand. I would say that this hand, this guy made a little bit more because he doesn't want anybody in. He wants to isolate against one person, and he wants to have, uh, he's got usually as uh, a hand that needs protection. So, I mean, he could have pocket tens here. He could have had the jacks, yeah. He could have had the ace queen or even ace jack uh, suited. Now he bets. Look at the size of the pot in relationship, uh, the size of the bet to the relationship of the pot. That was a very strong bet of, of three quarters. When I see half pot bets and smaller bets, even pot size bets sometimes, they, they kind of tend to make me think somebody might be might be weak, uh, over betting. You just got to interpret the different styles of different people. Now I got a 7-3 here. I'm out of position. I got a bad hand. He posted. You see, he posted and he checked. This is a guy that should be able to take it away from Let's let's do an experiment here and go 235. We have to get this guy out right here. This guy, I think, is going to fold. Let's go. I would fold this hand normally. Now, I picked up that money because I knew that that one guy up here was going to fold. I just needed to get the big blind out, and he had two random cards. I put enough money in, and I picked myself up a dollar something. So those are little techniques that you can use, especially when you're building a bankroll down at these these lower levels. When you get to the higher levels, you're going to get some, some more serious players here. I'm on the button, but I'm facing a raise, and I got bad cards. So that's one good thing, two bad things, easy fold. So he just sat down. He should post. Normally, people that sit with $12, uh, he may just wait and, and walk around the board one time just to see what everybody's doing. He, he's, if he sat with that shallow money, there's an under the gun better. So this is usually your ace king or ace queen. We're one short. He's sitting out. So we're really too short. So it could be a little bit less than that. Maybe an ace jack. It could be king queen suited. It could be something like that. But 
more apt than not, it's going to be ace, king, or ace, queen. There's just 16 combinations of it, a lot more than pocket aces, pocket kings. She certainly, or she certainly could have king. See, there's a half pot. Remember before he did the, the three-quarter, which was a really solid bet. Now he just does a half pot bet. Let's see what he does now. Now he checks. So he wanted to see where he was, in my opinion. I hope he checks so we get to see. There's the ace. He didn't even have the ace. So king, queen fits with that board there. And that's what I think he probably had. Sometimes uh, people will chat. Uh, this is an easy fold. Sometimes I, I, I just want to see if they'll just respond or something like that. I put something in chat. Sometimes I'll tilt somebody with, with a comment in chat. Okay, so he's going to check. If I was in this hand, the first person that bets wins. Bet. Just bet. Okay. When you're playing heads up against somebody, you've got to make a stab at it if they check. If they want to trap you, they can trap you. That other guy could have taken that away at any time. All right, so now we have a, a king 10 in, in more late position now because we've got these two seats sitting out. Uh, it's not much difference, but we got a limper in there, and this guy may be limping with a big hand. I don't know. I got to find out kind of a player he is. So I'm going to make it a pot bet. I'm not limping along with these. Now I got the button. I bought the button. I got the blinds, or at least one of the blinds out already. Of course, if this blind wakes up with a big hand, he's going to come over the top he, because he's out of position. He calls, so he's got a decent hand. You don't call out of position without a decent hand. Sometimes these guys here will limp in with 50 cents. They might have aces or kings and come over the top of you even further. So I'm going to have to, if nobody bets here, I'm going to have to bet three quarters of the pot. It's not the best flop for me with the ace and the two spades because that could connect somebody really to this pot. But I raise pre-flop and I have to consider I have the ace here. Again, if he comes over the top, it's an easy fold. So that's an easy fold. So what did he have? What did we learn? We, well, first of all, we, he limped, he called, then he checked, and he checked raised. So that sets a pattern of maybe pocket nines or pocket sevens than anything else. Let's see if nope, he won't show him. Good man. So some ventures... Again, that king-10 is a hand that's very tricky, and you don't want it heads up. You don't want two or three people, and you want to be able to continuation bet and win if you don't hit anything. I missed. But I'm here to show you examples of things, and if I lose a little bit of money here demonstrating something to you, I don't care. That's not the goal here. The goal is to cover different aspects of playing poker, showing you what's good, what's bad, what can happen, and you learn from it. And you're learning free. Um I set this up on uh, Twitch and, and YouTube. Of course, on my Twitch page, there's a donation. If you'd like to make a donation or anything like that, I'm going to raise this up. Uh, feel free to, to do that, and uh, I'll keep making the videos. You can contact me uh, at alspath at alspath.com. Read the banner below, and uh, let's talk about some private coaching, some private lessons. Now, that's a $4 bet. That's a big bet here. I've got to catch now. I needed that in here. Now I'm going to pay uh, 275 into, into 975, and you can see what the it's almost uh, three and a half to one. But if I catch the 10, I can felt this whole this guy right here. Now the other day I did that, and I caught a set, and the guy caught a set above me, and it, it got me pretty good. So he went above me here, and I'm going to make a bet here of. Seven dollars and see where I'm at. If he's got the kings or aces, he's gonna go, and he doesn't. So I picked right. I thought he might have had ace king there, and he couldn't stand the pain thinking I hit the queen. 
Again, I'm betting into the razor after the first person checked because he missed, in my opinion. And so I'm trying to pick up the pot. And even if I don't pick up the pot, I may still have a redraw. If he come over the top of me, I'd probably release the tens in most situations. Although we're playing pretty light here. We're not playing heavy $500 stakes or anything. So we're not going to lose a lot of money. So he just limped in here. And since he had that pattern before, I'm just going to limp and feign a little bit of weakness myself. Now I'm going to give him a free card here. So he doesn't think I have, I could be backfire. He could get to a flush. Absolutely. So now I'm going to bet. He's going to think I got the queen. Because I would have bet the flush. And he just, take, he didn't have anything. So what we were trying to do, we couldn't do. Oh, I'm getting a series of pretty decent cards here. And you're all saying card rack, card rack. Well, I'm just being lucky right now. Doesn't mean I'm going to win, win with the queens. I went in. I, but I'm definitely going to raise. Since I'm out of position, I'm going to make it $2, not $1.50, which was the pot. Especially with this guy with the light money here. He's, he's apt to shove anytime. <laughs> Let's go. No! No! <laughs> I saw the 10 or the 5 coming. Look at the four spades. Oh, my goodness. I could have been beat so many different ways. And that's what some people do with a short stack. They limp, and then they, they, they try to win the, the raise, or you know, they have fold equity when they go all in like that. And then they'll take the race, hoping I have ace, king, or ace, queen, and I don't hit. And that's what they like to do. But you can't give up a pair of queens when somebody's got $25, and you've got $2 invested in the hand. Not that $2 is a lot, but... Because of the tactics they use at the micro limits, you can't give them credit. You can't see monsters under the bed and say, okay, that guy's got kings races. He got to be crushed. He very well may be have the, or she may very well be have the kings or aces. But that doesn't mean that they're going to beat you. Um, but it does mean you drew a big underdog. You only have two outs. Let's face it, you know, seven and a half percent chance of hitting that one. So we lost uh, four people now, and we'll get short. And now we've lost another person. So what I'm going to tell you right now, this may be a short video. If, in fact, we lose some more people, I'm not going to play shorthanded because of the rake and everything else. I'll probably go get another table and, and start another video, uh, maybe today, maybe later today. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm hoping that somebody else sits down real quick because I've was having a run of nice cards there and I was maybe I chased a few of them away as you remember we looked at the size of the stacks we came and this was your chip leader and now we have a new chip leader here's a tip when you're playing live when you want to make a bet let's say you have ace queen and you missed the flop and you're up against one or two players and let's say you raise pre-flop 18 let's say this $50 in a pot and let's say you're going to bet uh, $45 or something like that. If you want a call, say raise 45. Do not say anything else. If you don't want a call, say raise $45. If you don't want the raise, remind them it's dollars, not chips. If you do want the raise, just say raise 45. Or just say 45. Okay? If you don't want the call, remind them it's real money because people tend to buy chips and then regard them as chips, not money. And subconsciously, you can remind them that it's real money. You try it next time and email me at alspath at alspath.com and see if it don't work. Now, you got to have one or two opponents, preferably one, where it really can work. But when you have too many people, of course, somebody's not going to care what you say they're coming you get all usually calling stations that don't hear anything don't see anything this is an easy fold so i'm hoping that somebody else will sit at the table i'm going to go around the table one more time see if we can as our king of diamonds he came back um see if we get some more when you're playing five-handed you're posting and you're playing and everybody else is playing such a wide range of hand it's hard for me to instruct you. It's not hard for me to play it. I can play it and I can be more aggressive, but that's not the point of bankroll building. 
I don't want to lose the money that I've won because I'm trying to build my bankroll. And I'm also trying to illustrate to you at a full table. And even at a full table, like when I sat down, there's one person sitting out or one person empty. All those kind of things happen. I'm going to take my auto post off now so that I don't automatically post when it comes around me in two hands. But it's more difficult to do the training. And since I had some assistance this morning in setting up my new page uh, with the banner scrolling and with the um, new button here, which you, I don't think you can use on my video, but you can come to my Twitch page uh, and you can use, should you feel free to do that. Uh, I'll keep cranking out the videos for you and uh, please tell friends to view it, to comment. Please make a comment, a like or a dislike. Uh, that's okay. Just tell me what you think about it. Now, this is a late position. It's pretty wide. I could probably raise with it, but it's just not a very good hand. Um, too gapped. I think if it was king ten, uh, I would I would do, tend to do it a little bit more. <laughs> king ten. Where's my king of diamonds when you need it? Oh, we got another person. Look at. He sat down with ten dollars from the U.S. That's all information. What you're trying to do is get information on people all the time. Every edge you get leads to a better decision for you. King 10 would surely be nice. And the best card, if I had King 10 right now, would be the Ace of Clubs or the Nine of Clubs or something in clubs to give somebody else, you know, kings full of, uh, not Ace King because nobody raised here or something like that, but uh, give them a flush. Maybe we don't want Ace King if somebody was slow playing. You're right. I know what you're thinking. All right. He just sat down. Let's see. He'll post. He should. He's in the big blind. Okay. So we're going to fold the 9 5. I can put my auto post back in order here. Hopefully, somebody else will sit down and nobody else will leave. Six is not bad. We can go slow enough. Now, now see, he was the big blind and he comes out for 50 cents. Does he have the nine or the six? He's got nine dollars. What would he do here if he had the six? He would trap his, he should trap with it. Let's see if he goes to a dollar here. He checks. That's 50 cents again. What does he got, folks? Queen nine, king nine? What do you think? Now, he can't call here. He can go all in with his 10 bucks, but he can't call. <laughs> he didn't have the six because his money would have went into that pot. He had the nine. <clears throat> Seven eights, not good. Seven eights suited. It's only 3%, maybe three and a little bit percent better, but it's not good enough in this, in this short game for me to, to raise it up in early position. But please note, we're four seats empty. Even though I'm in early position, if I fold, it quickly puts these people in middle position and in late position suddenly. So understand that position changes. It's more fluid here in the short table game. All of a sudden, you find yourself with decent position where you didn't think so before. Now, we lost another guy. No, we didn't lose another guy. We still got six. I just went like that and thought we lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't come in. Don't come in. Don't even try to price me in here. Don't do it. See, right now, it's going to cost me 75 into a 325 pot. You know, that's four to one. He comes in. It makes a difference. I'm out of position. I got bad cards. I can fold it. But if he came in for the, so he had fifty one dollar twenty five would be four fifty, and it cost me dollar uh, twenty five for four fifty. You know, it just it makes it, it. That's when I talk about pricing you in. It gets it gets more attractive to get in the spot. The, they're offering odds that that because you're a long shot to win. If you would like any articles on poker, on figuring odds, or um, 
poker lessons, written lessons, um, give me an email at alspath at alspath.com. Tell me about yourself and where you're at in your poker game, and I'll be happy to send it to you. This is Full Flush Poker, and on my Twitch page, you can find a banner for that. You can join, and when you join using that link, you'll be in heartbeatpoker.net, uh, and they offer a lot of free rolls extra along with the site, and they also offer um, money added and some fun events. I was in late position. I just picked up my blind money. This is an easy fold. I'm in late position. I could try it again, but now i got to worry about three people trying to or having a hand so it's just you could do it I'd rather have this hand be ace ace 10 now it's not an issue I'd rather have it be king 10 or queen jack or any of those kind of hands rather than three seven just in case somebody did call I'd have a, a decent redraw I have no draw really there I gotta get super lucky Now, Ace Nine at a short table like this. If I'm first in, I'm 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 raising the pot. I don't like the particular hand, but it's a hand that I would raise. But this guy waits a long time. He must be playing a lot of tables, or that's his just his pattern. He lets the clock run down. So I'm gonna pot it. Now I, I want this guy out. This is the guy I want out because then I have the button on the late position. Now I don't. Now, that's not a great flop for me. I'm going to have to bet like I have hit something, but I got a feeling I'm, I'm beat. And I, if this guy calls or he calls or anything, I'm in trouble big time, and I'm not going to spend another dime on this. But yes, I could barrel again right now, but I, I tend to think that this guy has hit. He called my initial raise, and then he's got these two cards in the playing zone. I think he's going to bet around six bucks, and he doesn't. Could he have Queen Jack? Let, let's bet the 238 just to see for sure so he can't fold it. Ace Jack. So he called me without having a pair. So that's a, I, I don't care. I, I know I lost, I lost five dollars or whatever, big deal. It's a great illustration to show you the calling station that has overcard, one overcard to the board. He also had a 10 king, so he did have a straight draw. He had an, uh, a gut shot straight draw, so we have to remember that part of it. Again, this is the blind. If he comes over the top of me, i got to give him credit for having a good hand. He's going to be out of position on every round to me. But I think he's going to fold. He's watching another table or something like that. Oh, we didn't fold. I'm going to bet. It's always nice to leave a table a winner. Sat with 50, leaving with, uh, was it uh, 3366? Uh, that's going to end this video uh, for today. And I hope you check out some of my other videos on YouTube and over at twitch.com. My name is Al Spath. I go by Teach on Full Flush Poker. I go by Teach GPL over at Twitch. Thank you for listening. Please follow me. Get alerts when I do go streaming live. And uh, leave some comments. I really appreciate that. Thank you.